This one is in the cruiserweight division and it features James Lights Out Tony. He's a bigger version of his old self too, much bigger, against Terry Porter. Porter, as we look at the tail of the tape, a year older than Tony, despite the fact that he's had 44 fewer wins than Tony. Tony's a guy who made his mark as a middleweight and as a junior, as a super middleweight. That's where he was very effective. Now, he says, he's up over 200 pounds, but he feels he's more ready today than he ever has been. I'm in total great shape. I'm in better shape. I think I'm, this is the best I've been in, in six years since the Barkley fight. And I've trained six months hard every day. I may, I may have had three days off in the last six months. I've been working very hard. And let, the purpose of this fight is to get all the ring rust off and let everybody know that James Tony's back and he's serious. Well, Rich James Tony says he's ready. So the question I pose to you, is he ready? Well, we really can't be sure, Barry, because the guy has not fought in two years. However, during that time, he took the two years off, he said, basically, just to try to get his head together. And I think that was a good idea. Now, he ballooned up way past what his weight is tonight. He was up to almost 260 pounds. But he's got it down to 203, which he feels is a working level for him. And we're going to see. I'll tell you this, though. From the first half of this decade, between the years of 1991 and 1995, James Tony was either at or near the top of the pound-for-pound -pound list. If he wasn't number one, believe me, he was in the top two or three. And, and Terry Porter really looks upon this as this as his opportunity. He feels tonight is his big chance. Well, yeah, obviously it's a big chance. He's been in there with some good guys, though, and he, again, is an aggressive fighter. He's a little bit awkward and hopes to take advantage of James Tony's rustiness here and inactivity tonight. So the big question, of course, is over the head of James Tony. We're going to find out in just a few minutes. We take it to the center of the ring and Thomas Driver. Thomas? From the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona, AmeriCorps presents and the Fox Sports Network proudly present to you Fight Time on Fox. Let's get the action started. We have for you, first of all, 10 rounds of boxing in the cruiserweight division. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action will be Roger Yandes. Introducing to you first, fighting to my left out of the red corner, he's wearing black trunks with white lettering and weighed in at 195 and one half pounds. Hailing from Elaine, Arkansas, he has a professional record of 11 wins, three losses, two draws, with seven wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome tenacious Terry Porter. And his opponent, fighting directly across from him out of the blue corner, he's wearing green trunks with gold trim and weighed in at 203 pounds. Coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada, he has a professional record of 55 wins, four losses, two draws, with 35 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former six-time champion of the world, James Lights Out Tony. Once again, your referee in charge, Roger Yanez, to give the instruction. In fact, Three knockdown rule in effect. If you go down, you cannot be saved by the bell. Touch gloves and good luck. Let's take a look at the rules here in the state of Arizona. Ten point must system, of course. The three, three knockdown rule will be in effect. There will be no standing gate count. Fighter can be saved by the bell only in the final round, and only the referee can stop the fight. The headbutt rule, we go to the cards after the fourth round. And Tony does look pretty fit, despite the fact that uh, this is a much bigger version of the James Tony that uh, we saw in his uh, halcyon years. Well, at, you know, 203 pounds, it's more than he's ever fought professionally at. In his last fight, he weighed 189, in which he beat a very good fighter, Steve Little, over a 12-round distance. This was in June of 97, but he has not fought uh, since then. And uh, we're just going to have to see how much rustiness James has and how much this weight, if it does slow him down, in fact, uh, does uh, inhibit his performance. No question about the uh, opponent level that uh, Tony has fought as opposed to that which Terry Porter has fought. Well, he certainly fought all the great uh, the fighters in the division. I mean, he won the championship from Michael Nunn. He stepped up to 168 and won it from Iran Barkley. And what I think really was one of the real virtuoso performances of Tony's career. He was absolutely brilliant in that fight with Barkley. He hardly got hit. He showed all of his great defensive abilities that night. But he's a guy of it's really multifaceted in the ring. He can be a good offensive fighter, good defensive fighter. So much talent there. And, and then there are times he can just flat disappear. Now, speaking of disappearing, Terry Porter may disappear fairly quickly, too. Six, seven, eight. How you doing? Give me 
the above, so okay? Protect yourself. quick, short right hand. Tony very much in punching range here, and he does have those short punches, as we mentioned. The problem for Tony is if he continues to campaign at this style weight, cruiserweight and heavyweight, will be he's going to be a lot shorter than most guys. He's not going to be able to get this kind of punching room and get close to his opponents all the time. He had Porter going backwards with a punch to the gloves. Right hand from Porter. Yeah, Porter doubled up with that right, and I think surprised Tony a little bit. He blocked the first one, but the second one came from up top and got him. Porter's a guy with seven knockouts amongst his 11 wins. Scored a second round TKO over a guy by the name of Gary Dewar in Mississippi in his last fight. That was just a couple of weeks ago, in fact. That's always good medicine to, is for Terry Porter is to fight Gary Dewar. That's the third time he's knocked him out in his brief career. So three of the seven knockouts. Have to, have to wonder about Gary, though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Terry Porter actually has some recognizable names on his opponent ledger. I mean, he lost a very close decision to Don Diego Porter, who's a very good fighter, and he was also stopped in three rounds by Ike Ibiabuchi. <laughs> Tony fighting, I think, voluntarily with his back to the ropes here. Of the first round, big one for Tony. Here's the knockdown, Rich. All right, James Tony scores it in the first round. Quick, crisp right hand, barely traveled, maybe five, six inches. Fight time on Fox is being brought to you tonight by one Gerard Jones, the other half of tonight's dance. In his it's mind, the easy Wolf way Graham to needs to worry about him. And by Honda Motorcycles, cruise in and get great financing on Honda Customs. We have a very enthusiastic crowd, a big crowd here at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona. We've been here a couple of times, Barry, and the fans are just very enthusiastic in this place. A good fight down, Phoenix. Yeah, and a perfect uh, location for the boxing, too. Uh, this is a theater in the round, normally an uh, entertainment facility, and it's not a bad seat here. Right. The, the, the last seat in the house is 70 feet away from the ring. So round number two, Porter's going to have to find something. Took that short right hand from Tony, and it dropped him. Porter opens up here in the second round. Started to mention right about the time of the knockdown that Tony is a guy who has on occasion just disappeared and at other times has just looked like a world beater. <laughs> and he's had some great fights when he was in that world beater class. I recall one, he fought a guy named T Tim Littles at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. I was doing the international telecast that night for the fight, and I was positioned directly below Tony's corner. And uh, between the third and the fourth round, Tony was very badly cut in that fight. And the referee came over and he said, look, James, I'm going to give you one round, and that's it. And the, so the gauntlet was thrown at that point. He knew he had to go out and get Tim Littles, who was undefeated at the time, and he knocked him out in that next round. James Tony knows how to get down to business. I had him in a fight against Murky Sosa back in 1991. It was one of those fights, and at that time, they were both on the rise. It was one of those fights that nobody won. Somebody lost, but nobody won. Tony's always had a lot of heart. The only question about him, of course, has always been discipline in terms of making weight, getting down to weight. Now as he fights at a higher weight, of course, he won't have the same problems of worrying about getting to 168. He'll be a happier fighter. <laughs> yeah. He does seem relatively fit, despite carrying 203 pounds. James has always been a punishing hitter with both hands. Get low. Get Often overlooked, though, is his defensive ability. He's one of the finest practitioners of being able to take a punch on his shoulder, on his left shoulder, and then come right back and throw a punch out of that and score with the right hand. Blocks a lot of punches with that left shoulder. Step around. That's what we're working on. Step around. 
Good man able to do much damage. There was a, a short left hand from Tony a little while ago, and Porter's got him with a couple of punches, but no damage in the second round. That's a left hand by Porter, and then Tony comes right back with a pretty good uppercut. Being on the ropes here, though, is allowing Tony to rest a little bit early in the fight. He's not being really punished along the ropes. That's pretty much the way he fought the first round, also. So we come to the end of round number two. Porter gets there with a the left hand. Not a bad comeback round for Terry Porter. We're coming back. Back home wants to talk. We welcome you back. We come to round number three. James Tony in the green trunks and Terry Porter in the black. And uh, Porter might have decided that uh, he's able to hang in there with Tony in that last round. Did a pretty good job. He landed a pretty good combination right before the end of the come round. Come around, come around. Uh, showed some speed of hand when he did land it. And they're, they're basically been nose to nose. Yeah, two guys who obviously have come in here with the same game plan. <laughs> James Tony being uh, trained these days uh, by a guy who was a pretty tough customer himself in his day, Freddie Roach, down the corner of your screen there. Yeah, he was a contender himself, a good, good uh, fighter, exciting fighter. And he's proven to be a very good trainer, too. Takes an intelligent approach to it. Working with Tony here. He also uh, handles, by the way, Lucia Riker, the very finest uh, female fighter in the world. Maybe handles is the wrong word. There he's, <laughs> he's the trainer of, I got it. <laughs> Terry Porter really hanging in there fairly well, but not muscled a little bit thus far. Tony, despite the weight, is still uh, showing speed of hand here. Barry, he's uh, showing quickness with his punches. Could be Hoop Porter to try to take Tony into the later round, see if he really is as fit as he says. James actually ballooned up to 250, 260 pounds in his time off. I, I, I was pointed out, one time somebody pointed him out to me at the fight, and I swear he was almost unrecognizable. Yeah, I was with you, as a matter of fact, he yeah. was in Los Angeles. That's right, yeah, he, he attends the boxing matches quite a bit, and, and it was it was a real shock to see him at the time. And you'd think well, he'll never get down to any kind of fighting weight again, but he has. At least this is what he considers fighting weight, but maybe a little bit more. He's got pounds to lose and still remain a cruiserweight. He's actually fighting in the heavyweight division if you look at 203 pounds. There's a right hand by Porter, and that seemed to stop Tony in his tracks. Porter's getting pretty brave here. Yeah, and he's landed some punches. Of course, it could be the, the style that the fight is being fought at here tonight is going to result in Tony getting hit side. Only other time he's fought over 200 pounds. He fought a guy named Richard Mason back in 1996. He won a 10-round decision, but he was very sluggish in that fight. So we come to the end of the third round. Again, not a bad round for Terry Porter. We're coming back. What you drive, We welcome you back. We start the fourth round. Terry Porter in the black, James Tony in the green. But Porter starting to work himself back into this fight a little bit. Yeah, in close, he tries to uh, flurry with Tony. You would think he looks as though he's a lot more long-armed than Tony, that he'd be better off from the outside, but he's elected to keep it an inside fight. Terry Porter didn't start boxing until he was uh, 25 years old. He's 31 now, but he didn't even step in until he was 25. And uh, he was out of the military at that point, looking for something to do. And so uh, he became a boxer, although he did do some kickboxing when he was stationed in Germany as a member of the military. Porter's corner wants him to step to the left and then punch, and he did it a moment ago, and it's been effective when he has done so. Tony said he just spent time out of the ring almost these two years to try and get his head together. 
get himself together personally. He has been known, of course, as a man who's uh, had a temperament uh, and a temper problem. And I think all those battles with weight adds to that. He was, of course, married by, uh, <laughs> managed by Jackie <laughs> Callan early in his career. And actually, not just early, but through his championship days and up through his fight with Roy Jones Jr. Tony starts to open up Terry Porter a little bit here. This could come down to a conditioning fight, though. Tony clearly the stronger of the two, but Tony is really a guy who knows how to break down a fighter. I think at the time that he fought Prince Charles Williams was just a great example of that. Prince Charles was, Williams was a good fighter. He was in there at, almost at his best against Tony. They fought a grueling fight, and, and Tony, little by little, though, was breaking them down. and finally got him and knocked him out in the last round, the 12th round. Porter just covering up here. Tony doing all the work. Tony just a heavier-handed puncher than Porter. He's a punishing hitter, Barry. Not a one-punch knockout puncher, but punishing. I mean, they thud and they add up. Porter still will get his share. Tony fights in spurts, and when he stops, Porter obliges by hitting him. End of the fourth round. We're coming back. We come to round number five, Tony and Porter, and uh, when Tony's working hard, he's being effective. When he relaxes, Porter pops him. I still think Tony does enough to win every round. And again, he's working off a of ring rust with every round that goes by. When he fought Roy Jones, he had had such a terrible ordeal in losing the weight. And it's not to say Jones might not have won the fight anyway, the level that he was fighting. But uh, really, Tony had nothing left when he got into the ring that night. He, had, he just had nothing against Jones. Down in the corner of your screen, that is the fiance of James Tony and Jeanette Corelli, watching, needless to say, uh, with a relaxed interest, thinking her man has this pretty well in control. High connect percentage for James Tony. And you're, you made a point a little while ago about wearing an opponent down, and that's exactly what appears to be happening. Yeah, and Porter, I think, is feeling the effects of all those body punches, and he looks weary. Porter laying on Tony a lot more than he was earlier. Tony just scoring at will. Every one of those punches is scored. Every one of those punches scored. Now he's always been a very accurate guy, and he's looking to close the show right here, I think, Barry. And I think he's close to doing it. He just has not missed a punch in this round. Again, one, two, both got there. And another left hand gets there. So James Tony in his career as champion, not only did he score that, what was then a shocking upset knockout of Michael Nunn, but he defended against guys like Reggie Johnson, who's currently light heavyweight champion, Mike McCallum, a great fighter in his own right, went on to beat, of course, Iran Barkley, as we mentioned. This guy's really fought and beaten 
most of the bat. Well, he has been tremendously effective in this round, and admittedly he's fighting a slowed down Terry Porter, but I'm not sure he missed more than two or three punches. We'll be back. We welcome you back. We come to the sixth round. Barry Tompkins, Rich Verrata. We're at the Celebrity Theater here in Phoenix, Arizona. Our first fight of the evening. It's in the cruiserweight division. The former middleweight, super middleweight champion, James Tony, against Terry Porter. And Tony right now really starting to wear his man down. Tremendously effective round in the fifth round. And it's seeming, Rich, that this is just a question of time. It would appear that way, but Porter to me was uh, was uh, wearing down badly at the end of that last round, and I watched his legs seemed a little bit shaky as he went back to his corner at the end of the round. Tony, again, just simply not missing any punches. Porter really unable to do much now. He's laying in on Tony a lot. Hoping to just catch him with a quick flurry of punches if he can, Barry. Crowd trying to support Terry Porter, but Terry right now really looking the part of a beaten fighter. Terry will need after this point is another bout with Gary Kirk. That's right, exactly. Just to lift his spirits. Tony playing possum over here. Good left hand again and a double right hand. Look at that effectiveness. Porter says, come on. Tony obliges him. At the lighter weights, of course, his opponents would have fallen by now. Porter got there with the left hand. Although he's still punishing, he won't carry the same power now at this rate that he did at 168. I, I think a, a great weight for James Tony would have been 175. Though. That was a left hand by Porter right at the top of the head of Tony, which did cause him to take a step back. But again, Tony will do this. Tony will just pretend like he's hurt and then come with the floor. Come on, baby. There you go. That's it. You want it now. Tell me about that. Quarter, though. Let him up. Out there with another left hand. Sit down. Pop your back. Show. Don't let him off. Step around. Come on, baby. Throw it. That's it. Throw it. Tony tried to get Porter out of there, couldn't do it. Now just kind of laying on the ropes. And there he opens up with the right hand. So the end of six rounds, and uh, we'll remind you, of course, that's still to come, our main event. Wolf Graham and Gerard Jones, they're going 10 rounds in the heavyweight division. Wolf Graham, of course, uh, down to 289 pounds, never fought below 300, either as a professional or as an amateur. He feels he's ready. He really feels this is the dawning. His wife, uh, Vanessa, in the crowd, as always. Now, she'll be in the crowd now, but when they tee it up, Vanessa will be out somewhere in the wing. She can't stand to watch her husband fight. She'll get reports from people who will run in and out and kind of give her an update on how things are going, but she just can't stand there and watch it herself. <laughs> but Wolfram, you mentioned 300, under 300. He's never fought under 315, which is where we saw his last fight against Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Got a little bit lower and start rolling those shoulders. You hear me? Come on, come on. James Tony uh, doing what he needs to do. <laughs> this fight has not much been in doubt since the first round when Tony dropped Porter. I'm sure in his corner, too, they're saying, go ahead, get him out of there. Let's finish this thing. Let's go home. Well, it's okay now, but in the long run, he gets a lot more out of going some rounds here, Barry, than he does. If, if Porter hadn't have gotten up from that first round uh, knockdown, that right hand that put him on the canvas in the first round, and it would have been a one-round blowout for James Tony. really what value would there have been in that, other than actually just you know, climbing into the ring and getting the feeling, at least, of a fight? But here, at least, he's in a fight, and he's been forced to work, and he's throwing a lot of punches. 
and been hit a few times. So this will this will work to his advantage in the long run. Well, Tony being every bit the cute fighter, and I don't mean that necessarily as a derogatory term. I think I probably would have always described him as a cute fighter. Yeah, very clever. Knows a lot of tricks. And he will entice you into throwing certain punches or get you into angles so that you throw a certain way and so that he can punish you and make you pay for that mistake. Tony, as you said earlier, still with very quick hands despite the weight. Terry Porter seems to slow down maybe even another step here in this round. There had been some talk before that uh, Larry Holmes and George Foreman situation, an ultimate uh, fiasco, that, uh, that James Tony was going to fight Larry Holmes in the comeback. Come on, come on, come two kind of two old foxes. Interesting that Porter prefers an inside fight. There. I just don't think it works to his advantage. He's sure more long arm. I would have tried to take advantage if I could of reach. I think you make a good point, though, that all his opponents, that is all of Tony's opponents, at this weight are uh, not going to be the size of Terry Porter. He's going to get in there with some guys who have a distinct reach advantage who will try to stick and move on him, and that could give him a problem. Yeah, they list Porter as 6'1". I think he's somewhat less than that. Yeah, he doesn't look a whole lot taller than Tony. Tony at 5'9". Let's not say there haven't been some pretty good light heavyweights and cruiserweights that have been of that 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". It's not out of the question. Tony, again, just kind of driving the bus. Hi. Hey, buddy. Uh, yeah. How come you're... We welcome you back. Round number eight upcoming. A little problem with the ropes, as you see right in the foreground there. Look at that gap between the second and third ropes. And that, uh, especially in a fight like this, where the fighters have had their backs to the ropes on numerous occasions, probably a good idea for the referee to notice that. It's almost like the old days when they had the three strands instead of the four as they do now right. to prevent that kind of problem. And the fight, of course, more of same as Tony doing pretty much what he wants at close range with Terry Porter backhanded in there. Yeah. Referee taking a very close look at Porter here. See that shoulder of Tony, how he's moving it into a defensive posture? That left shoulder is what we talked about. A lot of times when he takes a punch right there, he just wings a right hand right after him, shifting his body side to side. So he really looking like a beat fighter right at the moment. He gets in the nose and general swelling around his face. Very little jabbing from Tony tonight. He hasn't had to follow a jab in to get close to his opponent, Barry, which he will against other heavyweights, probably. He's not going to just be able to walk into a heavyweight or and, and get close to him or have heavyweights who are willing to go uh, chest to chest with him. Let him off, let him off. Break, 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 break. You see, uh, he, just, he just walks in. He hasn't had to use that jab at all. Okay, let him up. Let him up. Right. Good idea, break, probably, break to uh, get an opponent that that will try to utilize the jab sooner rather than later. There's a huge left hand. That caught Porter wide open, and now it's all but over. It stopped right there. That's all. That's it, man. That's all. I think it's well stopped. And too many shots. And he's taken an awful lot of punches here tonight from James Tony. And so a successful return to the ring for Tony. Not his most aesthetic performance, but keeping in mind the 
ring rush that he wears going into the ring and the fact that he's fighting way at a heavier weight, getting accustomed to that, trying to adjust himself to that. All in all, the successful comeback. Yeah, I think he did what he needed to do against an overmatched opponent. The fight, as we said, for all intent, was over in the first minute when he had that flash knockdown. And uh, after that, did pretty much what he wanted. Here's the finish. All right, he was putting it on him right at the finish. You missed the left hook. It was just moments before that he had landed a major leg left hook. And then he just went into the corner, and Tony showing no mercy. And I think the uh, referee, Roger Yan, has realized that. There you see Tony working in close against him. Porter looking for some. There's that left hook. It's a beauty. And he threw it at the same time that Porter did. Tony has always excelled at that, being able to get out of the way of an opponent shot while throwing a, same, a punch at the same time. And he went in. Roger Yanez said that's enough. And I think Roger's right. That was really a major league left hook, though. And quick. It's almost, it's not really even a counter, Barry, as you see, because he starts the punch at the same time as does Young, excuse me, as does uh, Porter. Measured it perfectly. Couldn't have been better thrown. And then, of course, uh, any good fighter knows how to finish, and he did exactly that. So we go to the center of the ring. Thomas Triber will make it all official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official time, two minutes, nine seconds of the eighth round. Referee in charge, Roger Yanez, steps in and calls a halt to the bout with your winner by technical knockout, James Lichtow Tony. Well, I think eventually he'd like to get another shot with Roy Jones Jr. at a higher weight than they fought before. Who knows if he can keep it going. Maybe someday he'll get the chance. An impressive record, 56 